Welcome to this episode of Reflections. What is on everyone's astronomical mind is how to find Comet Neowise. It is visible in the Tucson skies, though it's not easy to find with your unaided eyes. So in this episode, we'll look at exactly how you can go about doing that. Here are the basic steps for finding the comet in the night sky. Travel to the place you intend to see it from, perhaps at around sunset or just shortly afterwards. Note where the sun set on the horizon. You'll want to turn your body slightly to the right from that direction and face to the northwest. Then, once it has become dark enough, the next thing to do is to be able to find the bright stars of the Big Dipper in the sky. If you cannot yet find those stars or see them, you will not be able to, with your eyes, see the comet either. So finding the Big Dipper is going to be the way in which you know the time is right to also find the comet. Once you have found the Big Dipper, the shape is such that you'll find three stars in the handle and then four that make up the bowl of this big celestial spoon. The bottom two stars point to the right in the sky, and they nearly point at what is Polaris, the North Star. But back to the Big Dipper itself, you can drop basically down towards the horizon directly from the bowl stars of the, the pointer stars of the Big Dipper. And in a slightly more zoomed in map that comes from Sky and Telescope, there are some other stars that are beneath the pointer stars just outside of this field of view that you can use to even more closely navigate your way to the comet. Ultimately, though, the trick is to take a pair of binoculars and start by finding the stars or pointing at the Big Dipper with your binoculars and then simply going down in the sky, perhaps go to the left and go back up, and maybe one more time down and up, by doing that small raster in the sky of these 20 degrees or so, you will find the comet if it is dark enough. This chart shows where it is approximately on each night above the northwest horizon. One of the tricky things, however, about the comet is that when it's highest in the sky after sunset, the sky is also brightest during twilight. And as twilight fades, to darker and darker skies, unfortunately, as the Earth turns, the comet will be lower and lower in the sky. So there is a kind of a prime time, just about between, say, 45 minutes to an hour after sunset, where the comet is high enough and it is dark enough at the same time to see it well in the binoculars. Once you've found it, of course, you can continue to enjoy it as it sets on your local horizon. To see the comet, you may need to travel some distance from the city lights and find a low northwest horizon where you'll find the comet. And you will be rewarded with that effort as long as you remember to bring one of these, a pair of binoculars. This is the very best way to observe the comet. With it, you'll be able to see the bright nucleus as well as the tail stretching off into the sky. Here are a few things that will manage your expectations for finding the comet. The first is that star charts like this, it looks as though the comet is very high in the sky, but that is just not the case. This is showing something of a zoomed in view. Looking over here to the right, you can see what 10 degrees represents of the sky. 10 degrees is roughly the same as your fist held at arm's length. So while outside trying to search for the comet, hold your fist at arm's length. When you do so, you'll be looking no more than two of them above the horizon. That may surprise you as to how low in the sky that is, not high at all. Keep that in mind. Also keep in mind that when you look at pictures, this is an old one. This is one that I took some 
weeks ago when it was in the morning sky. Now in the evening sky, it is a bit brighter and more exciting, but these images taken with very sensitive cameras um, show much more than we can see with our eyes, even through a very nice pair of binoculars. It takes some practice to see these faint and subtle features. Today, the comet does show two tails. It has the dust tail, which is shown here, as well as another little bit that comes off, which is the ion tail. In pictures, you'll see one is this kind of yellowish color and the other uh, being a blue and more straight line. So those are some things to look for, but just finding it is a reward unto itself, and I hope that you enjoy the opportunity this gives us to see a bright comet in the sky. I hope you enjoyed this episode on reflections of space, time, and the universe around us. Good luck with finding Comet Neowise.